the course where we didn't use AI, we made 30 to 40,000 pounds. This one you just mentioned, we made in excess of 100,000 pounds. Out of curiosity, have you spoken to any people of knowledge? I have, yeah. I should be spending more time with ChatGPT than I have with my own wife. I said to myself, if we don't make use of it, our enemies will. So you want to tell them about the little fitness horse, or should we leave that one for now? Nice. I used to be heavily deep into this Illuminati stuff. Welcome back to Chai with my buyer. Before we get into the podcast, there's something I have to share with you, my brothers. Umrah with the Mandem Part 8 has finally launched. If you want to change your life, then you have to come on this trip. Over the years, we've helped hundreds of brothers and sisters completely turn around their lives. By the end of the trip, we're 100% certain that you will too. So much so that we're happy to back it with a money back guarantee. If by the last day you're not ready to change your life and well equipped with the tools that you need to change your life, then we will simply give your money back. The trip itself is only 10 days. That's all we need from you. Throughout those 10 days, there's plenty of activities, snorkeling, scuba diving, beachfront hotel. You're gonna love it and have so much fun. There's gonna be so many brothers around you. It's hard to achieve a goal like this on your own, but you're gonna have 99 other brothers with the same mentality, the same goal, doing the same thing with you. You'll have myself, Brother Imran, Saad, Guled, holding your hand throughout the whole process, making it so easy for you. There's no reason for you not to sign up. And not only that, if you do sign up, you'll get Muslim Survival Guide from Knowledge College absolutely for free. You'll get 313 Real Men and Talk Money from the Brothers Club for free. You'll get an Arabic course from the Arabic Code absolutely for free, all of which themselves are worth 2,000 pounds. So the question is, why would you not sign up? Doesn't make sense, right? So with that said, inshallah, contact the number on the screen or in the description and I will see you at Heathrow Airport on the 16th of September. Don't be late. If you're late and you miss your flight, there's nothing we can do for you. So make sure you're on time. See you there, inshallah. Alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah. Amma ba'ad. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Brothers and sisters, welcome back to Chai with my bai. That's right, it's been two years, over two years since we last were consistently releasing Chai With My Buy, the podcast episodes. And I know you guys have been waiting and trust me, we're back with a bank. So in the last two years, a lot has happened. If you look at it on a global scale, COVID came and went. In the UK, we've had over three different prime ministers. We've had Russia invading Ukraine. Andrew Tate has been locked up and now released. In our own personal lives, so much has changed. We've alhamdulillah made hijra to the UAE. We've left the da'wah scene for the time being. We went to Pakistan to seek knowledge. So much has happened. Yet, yet, with all of that said, we decided that today's episode, there was only one topic that could be discussed. And that is the topic of AI. In other words, artificial intelligence. So why is it that we've decided to start with this topic. Well, first and foremost, I wanna show you guys some statistics that I found online that will blow your mind, okay? We're talking about how fast these various different services and platforms reached one million users. Netflix took three and a half years to reach a million users. Airbnb took two and a half years. Twitter took two years. Facebook took only 10 months. Dropbox took seven months. Instagram, only two and a half months. And ChatGPT took only five days to reach one million users. If that's not enough to show you that this is an absolute game changer, then don't worry, because there's more to come. Your livelihood is at stake. Many people will lose their jobs, as we'll discuss later on in the podcast, because of AI. People are concerned about AI turning on the world, Armageddon. You know, there's a lot of people that have that mindset and they're out there and there's even some experts in the field claiming that this is a possibility that could happen and occur in our lifetime, not 20, 30, 50, 100 years down the line, in our lifetime. If AI becomes more intelligent than humans, then what is there left for humans to do? And 
the fact that AI is going to be a turning point in economic power in the global hemisphere. And if you look at it, at the end of the day, we want to make sure that Muslims are at the forefront, just like we've been for the last 2,000 years across various fields. If you look at surgery and coffee and algebra, the Muslims are the ones who are at the forefront of these fields. So it's only right that we're also at the forefront of these fields. So now, let's get straight into it. In today's episode, it's myself and brother Imran. Habibi, the first question that I would like to ask you is why did you personally feel the need to get involved, to start using AI? Alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah amma ba'd. Assalamu alaikum to the viewers. The reason why I felt like it was of paramount importance to get involved in artificial intelligence is because when it dawned upon me how pivotal this technology is and how transformative how transformative this technology is in terms of what you're able to do with it i said to myself if we don't make use of it our enemies will now i meant that primarily from a da'wah perspective right in the sense where in doing the da'wah that we do and as you mentioned we took a step back but we're back now alhamdulillah if we don't, the people of misguidance and deviation will use it. Why is that a problem? Because it, with AI, you're more efficient. Your work rate is greater. Things, you see, human beings, they are emotional. And based on their emotions, they perform differently. Human beings are also expensive and human beings make a lot of mistakes. With AI, you can eliminate those three things. With AI, the work is cheap. Okay, the precision is a lot better in many cases than humans. And also, you don't have to worry about emotions and feelings. Oh, he's going for a divorce, so he didn't come to work that day. <laughs> so you're able to perform a lot better. The output is going to be a lot more. So I said, if the people of bid'ah and misguidance and the people of deviation get their hands on this, then it could strengthen their da'wah. It could potentially strengthen their da'wah. And then straight away, I was like, wait, but also from a business perspective, your competitors, our competitors, from a business perspective, from an entrepreneurial perspective, will start making use of these tools and drive us out of the market. So I said, okay, it's time to go deep into this now. And when I started to explore it and dive a bit deeper, my mind was blown. Like, you know I'm not a tech-savvy guy at all. Mm. I struggle to book my own flights. I mean, I don't <laughs> know. I'll book and book my flight. I still don't know how to, you know, get... You know, I don't know how the point system on Emirates works. I'm not tech savvy at all. But I had to force myself to get familiar with it. And to me, it's very straightforward. It's very easy. It's not complex, not complicated. You're not writing code in any way, shape or form. It's very straightforward. So I felt like I was essential to dive into it. So what has been our journey with AI so far? You've mentioned AI being used in da'wah. You mentioned AI being used in business. Mm -hmm. So what have you actually used it in thus far? So we launched this course called the Ajami Way on the Arabic code which is uh, an Arabic studies course. I ran the marketing of that 80 to 90% of it on the back of ChatGPT4. No, sorry, ChatGPT 3.5, <laughs> the, 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 the previous version. So the scripts for the videos, uh, the text for the landing page, ideas, the strategy, and so much more. And since then, we've used it in various different Areas of our business from marketing, from course development, from brainstorming, strategy, finances. And ChatGPT is just one of the AI tools. There's many other out there, mid journey for graphic design, which our creative director, Sami Panda, has been using. Many other things. Many softwares themselves are starting to integrate AI into, in, into, into the software into itself. The software themselves, right? So um, I would go as far as to say that work that would have taken me months. To do, I managed to complete in three days, several times, with the use of AI, alhamdulillah. With the Brothers Club, we managed to make six figures with one course, which was heavily, heavily, we used AI to put the, together the content for that. Big time. And and the course before that, I think we made between 30 to 40,000 pounds. Mm. So just, 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 I want people to, to, to just kind of just- And the value we're able to give, we're talking right. about the, the Umrah setup. Right, so- The worksheets and like, 
un, like no one I don't think has, has done the level of ihsan we gave to that course before us. I, and I honestly believe that to be the case. So people, because look, the course where we didn't use AI for the marketing and for the course uh, content and all of that stuff, um, we made 30 to 40,000 pounds. This one you just mentioned, we made in excess of 100,000 pounds. We made, I think, close to about 100, 30, 30 to 40,000 pounds. And we're still making sales off of that course, right? Alhamdulillah. So we, 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 we made almost three times more money. That's because we were able to provide three times more value. I mean, the way sales work, if people understand, on a very basic level, is the more value you give, the more money you make. The more value you give, the more you can charge, the more money you make. And I honestly believe that the Umrah setup course was three times more value. To be honest, it was probably more than three times value the previous course. And we could have charged even more for it and people were happy to pay. And that's the benefit of using AI is that you're able to produce a lot more value for, the, for your customers, for your clients, for your students. And that's able to charge more from a business side of things. And of course, from a data side of things, you know, we've got the Muslim lens who's right here, who's one of our cameramen. And, you know, he cuts up reels for us, right? Um, amongst many other things. With AI, he's been able to increase his work rate and his workflow because there's certain AI tools that you can use that will cut up the reels for you. They will do it for you. Does that make sense? Now, you still need that human element because AI is not perfect right now to be able to tweak things and fix things and, you know, clean things up. But we're able to create a lot more. What would have taken perhaps a week if we're waiting for him before, he managed to get done in three, four hours. So, you know. But, so would you on. say then that AI takes the majority of the credit for everything that we've done? Absolutely not. Why not? A Can't anyone just go and use AI and make 140,000 pounds? So imagine you have a great, you have a sword okay. and this sword is extremely sharp. Okay. It can cut through anything. Is that sword of any use? without a skilled warrior to wield it and swing it. Mm. You need the strength to be able to pick up the sword and then you need the skill to be able to swing it. So likewise with AI, AI is a sharp sword, but it can't do anything for you if you don't have the skill to be able to wield it. So with the advent of AI and everything exploding in the last couple of months with regards to all of this technology, and as you said, the mass adoption five days and it reached a million viewers, people realize very quickly, that it's about the inputs, the prompts that you give these AI tools. And I want people and brothers and sisters to pay very close attention to this, right? Because there's never a quick fix. There's never a shortcut. I don't believe, any, I don't believe in shortcuts or quick fixes. AI doesn't make necessarily my work easier. It makes certain things easy, but it, just, it doesn't mean I have a free day and I can be lazy now. It means I can work more efficiently. My output is going to be greater. My productivity will be higher, but I still have to be productive. I still have to be skilled. I can't take a step back, right? So when it comes to AI, it's about the inputs that you give it. So now we have this new skill that people are learning and talking about, which is called you know, prompting, uh, prompt mastering. People are trying to hire prompt masters for their businesses, for their services. Because it's about the prompts that you give the AI. The prompt is the input. Whatever you, you know, like even when it comes to fiqh, they mention uh, the mufti is asir al mustafti. The one giving the fatwa is a prisoner to the question of the questioner. The mufti, the sheikh, can only answer the question based on the question that was presented to him. Mm. That's what Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhum, they asked him, كيف طلبت العلم? How did you seek knowledge? How do you become a scholar? He said, with a tongue that is constantly asking questions. I, I asked the right question and I got the right answer. It's like a calculator. So, it's, you have to put the question in first for it to give you the answer. It, it can't right solve it for you. Exactly. So likewise with the AI, it's about the question that you ask. It's about the way you prompt it. Now, my prompts are only going to be as good and as skilled as I am. Now, Alhamdulillah, I have a good understanding of marketing. I have a good understanding of, you know, human psychology, human nature, sales. Um, so on the back of that, I'm able to what? I'm able to articulate prompts in a way that give me the best from the program. Then I'm able to make tweaks with it. But I forgot to mention, you asked, you know, we mentioned earlier about how AI helped us with da'wah. Sorry, with business. It also helped me in da'wah. In Ramadan, all of the lectures and the classes I did, I came up with the poster ideas and the titles for the events using ChatGPT. And it was phenomenal. That's some of the examples that we came up with. Does that make sense? So, and I remember I could, sometimes I'd spend days thinking of a title for, a, uh, for an event or, or, or an idea for a poster. I'd spend days doing that. I spent days. 
But literally, I was able to come up with like six within like 45 minutes. So, nah, it's been, it's been So effective. one concern that people have is that AI is making people even more disconnected than we already are. You know, mm -hmm. we always hear about people complaining about social media and how social media has made us unsocial because mm. we're always online and we're not really in person. And now it's like with ChatGPT, because even like, for example, you in your own life, and I've seen it because I've been working with you for the last few months, you've been spending a lot of time with your laptop, like a lot of time. I think well, at one point we even stopped to even like observe that, wait, like I've actually been spending more time with ChatGPT than I have with my own wife. I've been teaching him the deen. I teach him here. You've been teaching ChatGPT. Yeah, because sometimes he says some funny things, I have to correct him, say, look, this is against manager said, I've killed You know what I'm saying? I told him, if you, if you say something to me, which is in regards to the future, say, inshallah. I say, if it's the situation. And he does it. He does it. Allah was very. It does it. <laughs> <laughs> so the point that I'm making is, do you not feel like it's a bit unnatural? We're already quite disconnected and this will only exacerbate the situation. Whereas previously you would have been brainstorming with a human. Previously you would have been, you know, telling a human to take these notes down, to jot, to brainstorm, to idea. But now you're doing it with a robot. Does, is that not going to make us less social as human beings? So I've got two answers to that. The detailed answer and the one that I think people would like to hear, I'll leave that secondly. But the first question I'll ask is, Okay, let me run with that. Let's just say it is going to make us a bit more disconnected. Let's just say that it's going to further, you know, take us down this rabbit hole of, you know, technology that separates us from humans, whatever. So what do you want us to do? Let our competitors run with it? Let our enemies run with it? It's like nuclear weapons, for example, right? We all understand that nuclear... I mean, for example, the Islamic Shari position on nuclear weapons is that it's haram because... We don't believe in collateral damage. That's not a term that we coined, right? We're not allowed to harm in this deen, even if there is warfare that's taking place. Even a tree. Trees. Do you understand? Right. When the Prophet saw a woman was killed in battle, he said, hadhi, inna hadhi, he said hadhi lam tuqatil, or kama She was not meant to be killed. We don't kill women, you know, in, in battle. We don't kill trees, bro. We don't kill kids. We don't have collateral damage. We don't kill innocent uh, pe 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 people that are not considered in, uh, com combatants. Does that make sense? So that's the Islamic position. Ma'adalik though, the way it works on a global scale, on a global one, and I'm not saying this is right or wrong, but I'm just talking to you about what happens, right? Is that this country has made a nuclear bomb and it has the ability to wipe us out. So another country will say, well, okay, to protect myself from the imminent threat, I have to do the exact same thing. Now I'm not saying whether that's right or wrong and we should always take these issues back to the scholars and this is these are issues of Islamic governance and scholars and whatnot. So that's, that's, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm just talking to you about the dynamic. Likewise, if we don't use AI and we say, oh, it's just gonna make us, you know, more unhuman, it's gonna separate us, it's gonna, you know, kether, 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 all of this, it's just gonna make our enemies have an upper hand. In that way, it's going to make in business our competition have an upper hand, right? Like, for example, as one of the guys who left Google, he, there was a podcast that came out, went pretty viral. Uh, he was talking about how, you know, he left Google. Uh, he's an ex Google officer and something, and he was one of the pioneers when it came to AI. And he believes that AI is going to be problematic for the world, right? So he took a step back. And then he, he, he was talking about the guy um, that, um, heads Google right now, right? Um, and he was saying, look, look, he's a really good guy. He understands the dangers with regards to AI, kada wa kada wa kada. But why is he still carrying on with it? Because if he doesn't, Microsoft will. So it's like your competitor will do it if you don't. Or even a hostile country. Or a hostile country or whatever have you, right? So point being is that I believe these are cop-outs when you're like, oh, it's going to, you know, make us less human. It's going to make us lazy. I'm saying we're living in a world where AI is here. And in our deen, we're not told to be hermits. We're not told to go and just hide underneath a rock and, 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 and not embrace these technologies. But rather we're taught is to be disciplined with it. So out of curiosity, we'll talk more about the Islamic side of AI later on. But just could you touch upon it? Have you spoken to any people of knowledge regarding? My brothers, before we go back to the discussion around AI, I want to tell you about a gift that we've got prepared for you. It's absolutely free. We put together two documents on how you can use AI to really better your businesses and your data projects. So one of the things people really struggle to do is to come up with great names that capture people's attention. They also struggle to come up with promotional content that really captivates people and gets people talking about them and their project. So what we did is we put together two documents on how you can use ChatGPT4 
to come up with a fantastic name for your project or your business or your data project and a fantastic script for a promotional trailer video for content that you put on social media to captivate people and get their attention, have them talking about you, really making a noise. All of this is free. It's a gift for you guys because I want you guys to be ahead of the game when it comes to AI as Muslims, we should be leading this, inshallah ta'ala. How do you claim it? Just go to the link below, follow the instructions and claim it. As I mentioned, it's absolutely free, no strings attached, it's yours. May Allah bless you. Let's get back to the discussion. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, yeah. Of course, yeah, yeah. I, I spoke, I've been, I've been speaking to one of, one of uh, our mashayikh back in Pakistan. Um, you know, when it comes to contemporary uh, issues, you can't go to anyone. So Alhamdulillah, our Shaykh, Shaykh, the uh, Allah Hafiz Allah Ta'ala in uh, Pakistan, mashallah, he's very, very, very strong when it comes to applying the Quranic science on contemporary matters. Like Allah has really gave him that strength. Let's so, save his response for later on in the podcast just okay. to make sure that okay. the viewers stay engaged. I like that, I like what you did there. So the next question I want to ask you is what advice would you give? Because a lot so of- If I can come back to that point about the issue. So so, so that's that's my first answer, just who- Oh, thought, sorry, like, yes, you your second the, this, this, the second thing is we have to be disciplined with it. Hmm. So it's not, it's, not, it's not social media that's bad. I mean, some social medias are bad and some are, some have obviously, uh, and I, I generally advise people from being on social media when there's no need, when there's no benefit, 100%. But when we look at social media, when we look at Instagram, when we look at TikTok, right? Um, at the end of the day, it's a tool. tool. And that tool can be used for good, it can be used for evil. It's like a knife. I can use it to spread butter. I can use it to stab someone, mm. okay? My mom in the kitchen uses it. My wife uses it to spread butter onto the bread that we feed my kid. Does that make sense? And then, but at the same time, kids in West London, North, South, East London, they use it to what take the life of other people. So our knives. I don't think they're using butter knives. Not necessarily butter knives. Okay, cool. Okay, a sharp knife. I can use to cut steak. Yeah, yeah, steak. Yeah. I can use to cut bread. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I can. My point is that they you then use that to yeah, go yeah, take people's knives. lives, right? So likewise, money is money evil. Is money the root of evil? Absolutely not. But it's our mm. hearts. Mm. It's the heart that if it's good. What you do with the money will be magnified, and if the heart is evil, then what you do with that money will be ma will magnify that which is in your heart. Even with social evil media, with there's ways to use it without actually using the app itself. Like for example, Hootsuite. Like if you're a business and you want right. to upload content because obviously that's a way of getting your product right. or service out there, you can download softwares like Hootsuite, and there's many others out there. Fantastic. That you can use to post content across all your platforms without even being on the app itself. So, you, so exactly, so one of, one of, one of, one of the no biggest- No explore page, no search, nothing. Exactly, so one of the biggest things that we've kind of always found ourselves between a rock and a hard place and stuff that Sadat Wutaymi talked about many times is um, TikTok, right? He, he, he mentions that he's not on TikTok. His videos get spread on TikTok, but he's not on it because the app is filthy. Mm. Like you, you, you log onto the app and it will just throw you things that are just nasty. Does that make sense? That you don't want to see half naked women, people dancing, doing all this nasty. You don't want to see that stuff, right? It affects your iman, it darkens your iman. I remember I was one of the first du'at, walillah alhamdul minna, from the West that was on, t was on TikTok. One of the first, if not the first, I remember I was on TikTok at a time when you put the hashtag da'wah, when you put the hashtag Islam, Pakistanis, you talking Urdu, used to come up, you know, singing the sheets. Like, because remember, TikTok blew in the subcontinent in the Far East before it blew in the West. So I remember that's how early I was on TikTok. And we really grew, we really blew on it. Not that the numbers is anything, um, but it's just that. Was, was I was the first there, or one of the first, if not the first. Um, but then I took a massive step back because I just didn't find it right for my soul. And I know that you also felt the same. And we had people that work for us, that upload for us on many different platforms that act is filthy. We don't want to see that stuff. So then things like Hootsuite now is a solution, as you just mentioned. That's what I'm saying, that there's always a way around. Like I have that mentality of, okay, this is haram. I find a solution, which is halal. Put your trust in Allah, be truthful to Allah, He'll find a way out for you. So Hootsuite, okay, you got to pay a bit of money, but for your business, is it worth it? That I can now control all of my social medias from one dashboard and I don't have to ever see the news feed. Makes sense. The next thing that I wanted to ask you, right? There's a lot of people, as I mentioned earlier, who, you know, lose hope very easily, mm. right? People, maybe they've watched too many movies growing up, you know, where AI became sentient and robots started attacking the humans, taking over the humans and the mm. humans were at war and obviously we don't condone movies or anything like that. But the point that I'm making is whether it's going to happen or not, put that to the side, Allah alam. You know, we don't know what the future of AI is and so on and so forth. 
But what advice would you give to our Muslim brothers and sisters that are watching this with regards to how they should feel about such things? Yeah, so uh, look, we shouldn't become obsessive and scared of these things. I, I feel like panic strikes and people become very scared. So if we take this back to COVID, for example, mm. Akhi, I remember sitting with one of my teachers and he was mentioning, Akhi, the way that people were scared of COVID, he says, borderline shirk. Shirk is associated in a partner in worship with Allah, right? Now, obviously, you can be scared of things naturally, but then there's a type of fear which is only for Allah. So Allah said, فَلَا تَخَافُهُمْ خَافُونِي إِن كُنْتُمْ مُؤْمِنِينَ don't be scared of them, but be scared of me if you are indeed believers. Allah said Allah is more deserving and more befitting to be feared, right? And then there's a hadith from the Prophet ﷺ, he Some mentioned that right illnesses so. don't, the contagious element of illnesses is non-existent in that the illness cannot travel in and within itself. It's important to understand this. The Prophet ﷺ here is not saying that illnesses so can't, be contagious, that there's no such thing as a contagion, but they can't do it anywhere within itself. We know that he did believe that there is, because the Prophet told us that, if, you know, with, with issues with regards to leper and leprosy and stay away from leprosy because it's a disease that could be contagious. But what the Prophet here was teaching was that it happens with Allah's permission. That's why you've seen people who be around someone who's infected with a certain illness and he won't get sick. Another person will do every measure to protect himself who use that antibacterial wipe, who have the face mask on, and he will still get sick. You see a person who's extremely healthy, who will die of a heart attack, and a person who's been smoking weed, taking drugs, drinking alcohol all his life, and he will live, what? A very long life, and perhaps would not even get ill like that. So point being here is that the Prophet was teaching us that it happens with Allah's permission. So now when it came to COVID, something that you can't see, okay? People were panicking and scared of it, to the point where it was like it had a life of its own, to the point where they were scared of it, as if, in a way that is borderline or if not more fear than Allah So in these things, don't forget that Allah is ultimately in control. I mean, I remember that I used to be heavily deep into this Illuminati stuff. Okay. Most people talk about arrivals, the documentary arrivals. Before arrivals, I was deep into this Illuminati stuff. Meaning that I used to study. Not that you were personally involved. Not that I was personally involved. Oh, but I used to study it, said, deep into it. Right. To the point where me and my friends actually made an organization. It's back in Jahidiyyah, by the way, right? That when, like, uh, the Freemasons and the Illuminati, they come out to kill us all off, we're going to have a little group to defend ourselves. We were about to buy a van. We did you think about to buy a van <laughs> so we can, you know, drive around, bulletproof vests. Well, I'm not exaggerating to you. Like, I was deep into this. And I saw how it just takes over your mind. Over, yeah. And 2012 was the date where they were like, this is when the world's going to, you know, kick off in war and everything's going to come to an end. And I remember feeling so dark. Like I sit there looking at my dad and mum saying, you are laughing, but you don't understand what's happening. Like the world's about to end. Right? And then when I started practicing, Alhamdulillah, I was like, you know, Allah is in control. Mm. Allah is in control. Allah is in control. Many calamities have gone and come. Okay, many things have happened. That doesn't mean that you don't, you, feel, that you become, you know, heedless. Of course. That's another extreme. You're but you don't lose that. hope. My you point My point here is, Ak, when they were talking about COVID, Billah Alik, everyone felt like the world was about to end. Alhamdulillah, we didn't. We were chilling. Yeah. I can't lie. We were chilling. I don't mean that Not to party be insensitive. Gate. Yeah. Not, as yeah, in, we not in my house. We weren't doing what the, the Tories were doing. No, 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 no. In I was in my house chilling. I don't mean that to be insensitive towards people. We weren't people worried, who, concerned yeah. too tough. And like I said, I don't mean that to be insensitive towards people who lost family members and loved ones. But but my point was, I mean, I speak to my wife and say, Allah is in control. I don't get it. What's, what's, Allah is in control. Like we are living in Allah's earth. Okay? No harm can touch you if Allah doesn't will for it to touch you. I do my dhikr, I remember Allah, I read Surah Al-Baqarah, and protect us, and I take the means. And if Allah wills for harm to touch you, there's nothing you can do nothing to prevent I it. Do, no, I, I could have done to prevent it. Does that make sense? So likewise, when it comes to AI, like I'm saying, I definitely don't believe AI is some Armageddon. 
because we were told that Jal is gonna come, and we were told all of these things are gonna happen. That Isa is gonna come, is gonna be the Mahdi. Like we already know how things are gonna map out. So I don't look at AI as Armageddon. I don't look at that in any way, shape, form, because the end of the world has been already mapped out to us with certainty, and we don't make these tatwilat and these reinterpretations that the oh, Dajjal is, is is a system TV. and uh, mm. and the donkey of Dajjal is a plane. Like, no, the yeah, Prophet Muhammad was a zombies. Right, the Prophet exactly right. So Prophet clearly told us what these things were, very explicit in what they are. So we understand. So for me, it's I don't. This is not Armageddon. Mm. Okay, it could be problematic. Yeah, you got people like Elon Musk coming out and saying that these things could attack us. They could turn us. The guy from Google who I mentioned earlier in that podcast that went viral on on, on um, about, about uh, you know he's he's talking about. Don't bring children into this world. I'm like, bro, relax. Now I'm going to bring children into this world with Allah's permission. It's funny you mentioned that because we're actually going to do a podcast about not bringing children yeah. into this world. By the way, I actually From met, a different angle. I actually, yeah. Uh, what you, oh, yes. Yeah. Huh? I don't know if you mentioned about brothers who rush into. Oh, yes. When it comes to marriage. Yes, yes, yes. It's a very important someone who brings them into this world, right? Of course. But I, I actually met that, 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 that guy. Um, oh, yeah. Uh, in, in, in the in business Dubai airport, right? He's a yeah. very nice gentleman. Like, and, I, and I really felt the compassion he had for people in that podcast. And the concern that he had. A Muslim, right? I said salam to him. He responded to me, yes. Okay. So, yeah, as in, yeah. I said salam. He responded to me. So I'm gonna run with that, inshallah. But um, but he, his solutions towards the AI thing, I felt like the dean provides the solutions. Mm. Does that make sense? So anyway, that's something else. Just on that topic of uh, his podcast, right? One of the things that he mentioned <coughs> is that he feels that in a certain number of years, I don't remember exactly when he was saying it, but he feels like humans, they're just going to be on like some desert island somewhere. It's just he said, either because of the fact that, you know, we're getting attacked and all this, you know, we're, running, we're, we're on the run from the robots. Yeah. Or it's just that AI would have made our life so efficient. Like all the tasks, the things that we need to do will be done, like will be automated. There'll be nothing left for humans to do. So in a situation like that, it, the way he, like it was almost quite bleak that humans would just be waiting around to die, like what's there left for me to do? So in that situation, let's just say it, it was to happen, where would humans find fulfillment? Where would they find value in life itself? So this problem is a problem that I feel that only the, the disbelievers should have. I don't believe Muslims should have this problem. Why? Because we find fulfillment in worshiping Allah. Ala bi Verily, in the remembrance of Allah, the hearts, they find peace. Allah says, Whoever turns away from my remembrance, he would live a depressed life. Allah says, If you follow that which I have sent down in the Quran, you will not become misguided, you will not become distressed. So the believer finds joy in worship. The believer finds joy in ibadah. So if machines are doing all of my work for me, if machines are doing all of my work for me, then I'm free to worship Allah. Now, that's supposing that that is the outcome. And I believe that to a huge extent, it can be a plausible outcome, what was mentioned uh, by that ex-Google officer, in that these machines, they're becoming so smart at such an exponential rate. Like the point that he mentioned about ChatGPT 3.5, which came out in December, ChatGPT4 came out three, four months after it, and it's 10 times more intelligent. Like four months later, ChatGPT4 came out, and it's 10 times more intelligent than ChatGPT3.5. So even another four months, they released the next upgrade, ChatGPT4.5 or ChatGPT5, and that becomes 10 times more. Can you imagine ChatGPT5 being 10 times more not intelligent, right? And I guess the word intelligent is also... I'm using it loosely because can something that doesn't have real consciousness be intelligent? But point being is that the things that it can produce- so Computing are, power, I guess you could yes, say. Yes, it's skill. Yeah. It's, it's 10 times more skillful or 10 times more competent rather, I should say, than its predecessor. So I can't imagine 10 years down the line, this is gonna be nuts. Like for example, there are robots that perform surgery. Today, if, let me ask you a question, yeah? When it came to calculating your finances, mm. if you are an expert mathematician, you got a PhD in maths, mm. and you calculate my finances for me and what my profits are, and what, you know the dividends that I'm supposed to take, am I gonna feel as comfortable as I would as if you used a calculator, despite your PhD in maths? You trust the calculator more, especially big numbers. Big numbers, right? 
So I don't mess with my money, bro. Calculate, you just calculate. <laughs> so we live in a day and age where human calculations are not as comforting and we don't have as much trust in human calculations as we do in a calculator. Does that make sense? Likewise, now heart surgeries are being performed by robots that use AI where the precision and the success rate of those surgeries, and of course it's in the hands of Allah or Jad, ultimately, but it's way more effective than the human doctor, surgeon performing the surgery despite his expertise. We're going to come to a day and age where people are going to say, I don't want the human to perform surgery with me. They're going to feel more comfortable when it's a robot. The same way you're more comfortable when a calculator gives the answer to your what? To, 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 your, to your question So Point is that As things develop And as, as as these technologies develop We become a lot more accustomed To using them than anything else And AI It learns it it, 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 it it The rate at which it's developing It's not far-fetched That 10 years down the line It's going to have taken a lot Of stuff that we would do Off of our shoulders But I'm saying for the believer He finds joy in that so you're telling me I can pray Fajr and read the Quran till sunrise. And then I can go spend time with my dad. I can go visit the sick. I can fast. I and and and, and I'm not saying that we're gonna come to a day and age where you've got absolutely zero responsibility and you've got no hustle, no money, no nothing to work with. But I'm just saying if that circumstance comes, the believer doesn't feel sad. I can imagine. Because our ultimate purpose in life is what? Worship Allah. Worship Allah. Like, I, if anything, that's gratitude. Allah, you gave us these AIs that do everything for us. And like, that reminds me of like what Allah said about, 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 the, about, about, about the Jews, right? Like, food came to them from the sky. They never had to go search for it. Like, literally, food would drop to them from the sky. Okay? And then in the end, they were like, oh, but I want onions. I, I want food that comes out of the earth. And Allah is saying to them, uh, It says in the Quran, you pick something lesser than that which is better. I.e., like, look at the way humans are, right? Like, well, humans are really funny. Like, Allah is sending you food from the sky. And you're like, no. Allah is saying, I'll make your life easy for you. You don't have to worry. And you're like, nah, I want to work for it. <laughs> like, and I'm, and I'm not saying you shouldn't work. Like, we were told that if you have a seed in your hand, and you know the day of judgment is tomorrow, plant it. That's what the Prophet said. If you know, look how deep that is. If you know the day of judgment is tomorrow, you've got a seed in your hand, plant it today. And I know the world's going to end tomorrow. So it's time to tell you to be lazy, but at the same time, tell you to be grateful for these technologies that Allah's given us. And by the way, make no mistake, Allah gave us these technologies. Like khalq, to create. We didn't create AI. Create is not even a good word to use. Allah creates. Creation in Arabic means um, uh, to مثال سابق. Is to bring something into existence without any prior precedent or example of it. So Allah is the one who brought the materials into existence that we use to create these technologies in the first place, right? So Allah is the place within these materials that He put on earth the capacity and the potential to one day become planes, to one day become robots, to one day become cars, and all of these other things. Mm -hmm. Right? So, so, so ultimately, this goes back to Allah. So I'm sitting here thinking, Alhamdulillah. Mm. And now I get to worship you, my Lord. I get more time. So that's what I'm saying. Like, these are stresses that the believers shouldn't have. Another concern mm -hmm. that is there regarding AI, right, is in the field <coughs> of education. So mm -hmm. a lot of students are getting caught out using AI mm -hmm. and you know, for the dissertations, for the exams, and so on and so forth. And there's a real concern that it's just making people lazy. You know, like before when it came to seeking knowledge, let's talk about the deen wise, mm -hmm. right? For one hadith, you have to travel. Some, some of the salaf would, you know, get to a point where because they're traveling, they'd be urinating blood mm -hmm. because of how much they've been walking. And just for one hadith, and the tough times they would reach uh, a place and find out that the person that they came to take hadith from has passed away. Yeah. And this thing is we live in, Google has mashed people up. People just, you know, go online, find Sheikh the hadith Google, online right? and share Google and, you know, uh, even things like Islam Q&A, which can have a lot of benefit to them, but also a lot of harm that can come from that as well, where people apply rulings to themselves, so they just read it, so yeah, that's mm. me, not realizing that one small change in one small factor in that whole question that isn't the same as your situation can change the ruling, but you know, you just apply that to yourself. And even if you look at like, for example, back in the days, 
like the term hafiz used to be someone because back before everyone used to memorize Quran there was no one that didn't memorize Quran it would be that if you memorize I think more hadith than those that you don't know like yeah. you knew more than 50% of the hadith out there you were called a hafiz and today anyone that memorizes the Quran whether you understand it or not whether it just if you're hafiz. able to read it you're called a hafiz you know with with the with certain groups and sects they've got alimiya courses where you know three years four years you become an alim and there's scholars who've studied the religion for 30 years and wouldn't dare call themselves alims do you think that AI will exacerbate this issue? Because imagine you've got people who, because already people say that, like for example, there are certain uh, Islamic universities that the certificate from there is not really worth anything because you know the knowledge that's gained there, the real knowledge is in the circles of knowledge with the with the shuyuk and people that some people they go there and you find them in the cafes playing PlayStation. And they're literally just there to just get the certificate and that's it. And people say, oh, this guy's a scholar now. This guy's a student of knowledge now. Do you feel like AI is going to exacerbate that situation more so? Yeah, this is a, this this is actually a, a, a fear and a concern that I have. As you mentioned, right? You appreciate a hadith a lot more when you worked hard for it. When you had to spend tra travel three days and three nights for it on foot, so you're going to cherish that hadith more. You're going to implement it more. You're going to value it more. It's going to mean more to you. Generally speaking, you know. Although I said earlier that we should be grateful for the for, for, for the free time and the comfort that's gonna come as a result of AI handling a lot of things right on our behalf, alhamdulillah. With that said, we also have to understand that it's important for a human being to go through difficulty because that difficulty cultivates you. Even the word fitna in the Arabic language. Uh, when Allah says, Allah says That the people think That just because they say we believe They will not be put in fitna And fitna is a word used to describe The process by means of which you purify gold So when gold comes out of the earth It's not as beautiful and shiny Impure. as it is it's in, It has these impurities right So you have to pull it inside of a furnace And burn it process of burning the gold is called a fitna and the one who burns the gold is called a fatan so you apply this heat you heat you heat the gold you burn it and all of the impurities they disappear and what's left is this beautiful shining precious metal that people go to walk for and people are ready to spend big money to acquire right and that's what Allah Azza wa used to refer to the process of purifying the human being i.e. do you think you're going to believe and you're going to go to Jannah Without going through difficulty It's in the difficulties and the trials And your response to them And the way you handle them The patience, the perseverance that you have The resilience that is built From trial to trial That allows you to then handle another trial That allows you to become great That allows you to become this beautiful Precious human being, this precious believer right? So in a day and age Where things are being made easy for you And it's been handed to you on a silver platter There is that fear of we're going to not appreciate the real essence of these things And we ourselves are going to become weak in terms of um, Our personalities, our psyches We're going to become weak in terms of We're not going to value these things enough And that's problematic Does that make sense? We already have a pandemic of people speaking without knowledge Without people knowledge become right? Without seeking knowledge like, People like, answer questions without, Give fatawa without real knowledge Without real knowledge but when you work hard for that knowledge and when you sweat, you know, and you and you bleed and you cry and you, you toil in acquiring it, you honor it. You honor it. Does that make sense? Like the story of Imam Malik rahimahullah ta'ala when uh, uh, Ammar ibn Hisham, who uh, later on goes on to become the Sheikh of Imam al-Bukhari, he came into his circle and Imam Malik's circle was very, very, very what? Disciplined, like you couldn't just come in and talk. And he was a young Bedouin kid who came from the desert, came and said, you know, uh, teach me. And Imam Malik told his students, discipline him. So they lashed him. They lashed him 14 times. Imam Malik at the end saw this young boy, very, very sad and heartbroken, it seemed. His heart softened, so he walked up to him and he said because to him. Because you mentioned that my father... In Commanded me to go out and seek hadith from you. And he sold his whole garden. Sold his whole garden. And now you're not going to teach me, right? So Imam Malik, he said, how many times did they, did, they, did they lash you? And he said, 14 times. He said, okay, I'll give you 14 hadith. And Imam Malik, before that, was never known to, to narrate hadith. And he, he himself would never read. Only he would get other people to read for him. And he actually personally... He personally read on this. Read on word. this young boy, right? So... Um, then after he got 14, he was like, can I get more lashes so I can get more hadith? Yeah. It's a zid... 
علي ضرب وزيد علي حديثا وكما قال يو انكريس مي ان سترايكس اند يو جيف مي مور حديث بس ام سين داس ذا انفايرمنت ان ويتش ذا سيلف كيم اباوت اند ذاتس واي نوليدج واز سو سترونج اند واز سو جريت اند امام مالك رحمه الله تعالى انه يسال اي اس ذا ماي سكولرز اند ماي تيتشرز اي ثينك يو سمثينغ لايك 40 بيبل هي سال اي اس ذيم بيرميشن بيفور اي كود جيف فتوى before I could give verdict on the deen of Allah Azza wa Jal. You know, so you, there is that fear that now with AI, like, um, and just, just uh, to, and I'm very passionate about Islamic studies, Islamic knowledge, right? So I'm going to this point a little bit more because this I feel like could actually be a real downside of it. There's pros, but there's also cons. We have something called Shamila, right? And students know you probably be familiar with Shamila. Shamila is a- uh, Online directory, you can that, see of books. Yeah, it's like an encyclopedia where all the books of the scholars are basically, not all, but many of the scholarly works have been what? Like online library, you can freely so access library. books. So you can literally just type in like a quote or something and it will just come out of a book. Now the problem here, and I've not used Shamila, I don't know how to use it, probably by my, my, uh, my very, 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 very juvenile explanation of what it just is, is testimony to the fact that I don't actually use Shamila, right? I don't know because my Sheikh at the beginning, very early, he mentioned, Don't use it because it makes you lazy. Does that make sense? Like Shamila actually will, will make you an inadequate student of knowledge. And one of the examples of this is that people will write PhDs, they will write PhD works and they've put quotes from Ibn Tayyip, Ibn Qayyim and all of these other great scholars and they've argued certain cases and when you go back and you look, it's completely out of context. And you think, how did a PhD student of knowledge Who's got on one day be seen as a, he's gonna go back to people and seen as a scholar, make such a blunder. And the answer to that is because he's not reading Ibn Taymiyyah. He's just getting the one quote. And that, you know why that's dangerous? It's because well, like, Islamic study is very complex. It's not like reading Shakespeare. It's not like studying science or history. Like each Sheikh has his own methodology. And within, and one Sheikh has multiple books and different books have different methodologies. Does that make sense? So Ibn Taymiyyah is, and even Ibn Taymiyyah, he said, مَا فَتَحَتُ هَذَا عَلَى الْعَامَ He said, I never, I ne- like my, my works and these things that I've written was not meant for the lay person. I never did it for the layman. He's writing for students of knowledge. Like even, and because we spent, and we're going to do an episode on Ibn Taymiyyah, ta'ala. like this is the, the last year is the first time I actually took a deep dive into Ibn Taymiyyah Ibn Qayyim's works. And I can tell you, reading their stuff is extremely hard. It's not easy, bro. It's not easy. Like my level of respect for real scholars just went through the roof when we started studying Ibn Taymiyyah. Like the way we sit in front of our Sheikh, Sheikh the Allah in Pakistan, the way he just understands Ibn Taymiyyah, he's reading it fast and he's getting it, he's explaining it. That to me is, like for me, Ag is, is, is very hard. Does that make sense? So for you to just put out a quote. Now, And, and, then, and then put it in your book and say, you know, look at this. I've, uh, uh, I've understood Ibn Taymiyyah. And that's why we have a, pro- a lot of problem with a lot of these du'at. I don't want to mention their names, but we have these brothers that belong to different schools of ideologies and sects that are arguing for all of these different positions uh, that are problematic when it comes to aqidah and uh, whatever have you. And everyone likes to quote Ibn Taymiyyah. Everyone likes to quote Ibn Qayyim. But bro, you didn't understand. You opened up a book of Ibn Taymiyyah. You took out a page. You read it. You thought you were... Well, I had a conversation with one brother... Okay, I don't want to digress too deep here. Mm. In fact, I'll leave this for the episode with Ibn Taymiyyah, which where one brother, Ibn Qayyim and Ibn Taymiyyah, one brother read Ibn Qayyim and what he understood and came back to me and said was, there's not such a thing as, as, as good or evil. I asked him, is going to a prostitute bad? And he was like, Ibn, Ibn, there's no such thing as good or evil. And I was like, what are you talking about? He goes, Ibn Qayyim said it. And when he quoted the book straight away, I was like, you abs. You know what I'm saying? So now with Shamila, it's already been problematic. People do that stuff with Google. Like they have access to things that they think that they understood, but they didn't, right? And they cherry pick. And like you said, they take rulings that are applied in certain circumstances, don't apply to you. I can't even begin to imagine the kind of chaos that's going to be further exasperated when you, when chat GPT starts, what? Have I access to these things? Because for example, I said I use chat GPT for some data related stuff, right? Some of the responses it would give me is like, you know, like about Sufis and shrines. And I had to teach it, you know, this is shirk. And, you know, this is, this is not tawheed. We worship Allah alone. And, and he is like, okay, sorry. You know, I'm just, you know, his response is, I'm, I'm an AI, I'm a language-based, killer, killer, killer. But the point being is that, yeah, I, you can't go to chat GPT as a source of Islamic knowledge. The same way you can't go to Google. Like, yes, it might aid you here, there, Allah, alam, the practical manifestations for it. But 
at the end of the day, Akhi, look, Google is technology that came recently, right? Shaman is technology that came recently, right? ChatGPT now. One of the earlier technologies was printing books. And even when knowledge entered the books, the book was not enough to suffice you without the sheikh. That's the point I'm trying to make. Like, they place their knowledge in these lines, fi sudur, walakin, the knowledge remained fi sudur inside of their chest. Allah said, I place this ilm inside of the chests, inside of the chests of the, of what? Of the people. So you mentioned earlier, before that though, you mentioned the issue of fitna. So you want to tell them about a little fitna source? Or should we leave that one for now? We'll leave the fitness source for now. Leave that one for now, yeah. Leave the fitness source for now. Big things are coming, inshallah. So you mentioned <laughs> earlier that you spoke to your sheikh in Pakistan regarding AI. What did he say? What's the ruling on actually using AI? So the ruling, i.e. is it permissible, is it wajib, is it recommended? So first thing here is that all of these AI technologies are different. So they won't all take the same ruling. Some technologies might actually be haram, right? Because of the practices or what you can do with it being 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 harmful, right? But just generally speaking, when it comes to a lot of these technologies like ChatGPT, whatnot, so on and so forth, I asked the Sheikh, I said, Sheikh, is it something that we as Muslims should be using? Should we be going deep and diving into it? And we should always take things back to the scholars when we're concerned about something. When we when something new comes, you will know what Deen of Allah just says about it. Don't just dive into it yourself. Ask the scholars, the people of knowledge. And the Sheikh said, we must use it, we must learn it, and we must become better. We must become better in our understanding and our usage of these technologies in our service and aid than even the Kufar. So, and that was beautiful for me, right? Like this is, this is, this is, this is application of deen in the modern day and age that we live in. And reason why I'm very passionate and one of the reasons that we really wanted to make this video on AI be the first topic is like I said, I'm not a tech savvy guy and I'm not a techie. I'm not into any of this stuff. People know me traditionally and I am a da'i, inshallah. And I'm a tuwaylubu. I, I, when it comes to ilm, I'm very small, small student knowledge. I love knowledge and this is what I want to live and die for, which is seeking knowledge of the deen, right? Of course, I'm an entrepreneur. I have businesses, many projects, alhamdulillah. But this is, this is who I am or I want to be. A talibu ilm. Um, so what am I talk why am I talking about AI? Because this is something new, it's contemporary, it has many implications. It's either going to be used for us in our service, or it's going to be used against us. We're either going to benefit from it, or we're going to be harmed from it. And no doubt, we want to be at the forefront, does that make sense? Of bringing benefit to yes. mankind, to the Muslims. Alhamdulillah. We're going to be at the forefront of bringing benefit to mankind, the Muslims, through what we're able to produce with AI. We're going to be able to protect ourselves with it. We're going to be able to make money with it. Does that make sense? Um, Naam. So that's why we're bringing it to everyone's attention because this is a pivotal thing. Okay. We're talking about, you know, people cried when they missed out on the chance to buy Bitcoin when it was cheap. Does that make sense? And they cried before it when other opportunities came. Please don't cry over this opportunity. Like this is it's, it's going to be a sad day. It's going to be a sad day when a machine takes away your job. Like I fully, when I saw the potential of ChatGPT in certain areas, the first thing that came to mind is, who am I going to sack? <laughs> like I, I remember Kuja said, bro, I'm going to sack someone. I'm going to sack someone because obviously. Either they have to adapt their role to where they're using AI to become yeah. way more efficient than they currently are, right. or they need to go. Or they need to go. Huh? That's the reality. They, right. That's the, because, because you're costing me money. Like there's, 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 there's a certain job role, okay, that I might be paying a person hundreds or a thousand plus pound for as a wage, and I can find an AI tool that I pay 80 pound a month that would do that for me. So you do the math. And then, and then I can also filter out the human error. <laughs> <laughs> right and 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 incompetence so please get with the program and and it's not ai that will replace you it's a person using ai that will replace you that's very important to understand does that make sense so i'm not telling you to create an ai technology i'm trying to tell you to adapt and use these technologies Start learning educating yourself yeah, to your advantage so we've got five minutes left so what are some clear action points or tips and advice that you would give to the brothers and sisters that are watching this that they can take away from this podcast so 
definitely learn. Start educating yourself. That's the first thing, actually. Like, access to all of this stuff is free on YouTube. Like, it's just available everywhere, okay? And then there are courses. Like, I, I, I purchased a course on AI. Like there was there, there, there was a there was a marketer who used AI for marketing. I got on the phone to straight away. I said, "Actually, clear the cost because you're a finance man, right? Or you were up until this morning. <laughs> We've got any finance guy, Allah Bedek. But I said, "Clear the cost. Can you pay for it? I want to study and educate myself. There's only so much you can get for free, but then and there's a lot you can get for free, but then eventually you got to be able to pay, right? So, so and I'm always trying to invest in myself by attending courses. I'm looking for mentors, mentorships, people that I can pay to teach me." But at the same time, there's many things that are free. Then there's people that I know personally in my circle who are good with the AI. So I talk to them, what do you know? 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 Show me, show me, show me, show me, show me. And then using it myself. Does that make sense? So looking at the various areas and elements that I can apply it to. So that I would definitely do. Uh, specifically with regards to your areas of business and work. Start just searching on Google and YouTube, like how people in your areas using AI. There are sometimes AI technologies that, are that have been specifically made for what? Your field of your work. Your field of work. Yeah. Does that make sense? <coughs> so that's what I advise people to do. I also advise them to have tawakkul, to rely upon Allah Azza wa Jal, these, and, and be grateful to Allah for these technologies and put your trust in Him. And at the end of the day, these are just technologies, okay? And and I also want to just mention, don't for a second think that these technologies are going to be in any way, shape, or form greater than what Allah has already brought about. For example, Allah created us, right? People think that the AI... AI and the robots are going to be better than humans. They will never be. They will never be better than human beings. They might be able to do certain things better than what a human being can do. But the very fact that we're out here scared that AI could turn on us and destroy mankind shows clearly that it's deficient from a moral perspective, right? It will have its own way of working out through its algorithms and mathematical formulas whether it should kill someone or not if it ever gets to that, right? Mm. It doesn't have... An elephant is stronger than humans, but that doesn't mean that it's... It's, it's better than a human More being. dominant of humans. Right. Humans and are the dominant... And a, and, and a dog can run faster than a human, right? But it's not... It's not... We still are under control. Right. Okay. But then the human being produced AI at the end of the day, right? We educated it. And not just that, there are, that there's morality that we have. There's third person sensory experience. There's feelings that we can feel and there's hopes and aspirations and dreams that we can have. We are undoubtedly a better creation than artificial intelligence. If artificial intelligence was better than the human, then what? Allah would have made that instead of us. In fact, the Allah's ability to create is so great that he created humans that would bring about artificial intelligence. Artificial intelligence. Does that make sense? And that's how great Allah is. But yes, the other thing I just wanted to mention is that when we're amazed by the AI's technology and we start attributing intelligence or artificial intelligence to it, we talk about the AI at the IQ level of ChatGPT and Kedah and Kedah and it's learning at such a rate. I just want to mention, no matter how amazed you are by these technologies and the amount of skill they seem to, or intelligence and knowledge they seem to have, if you just direct yourself to the speech of Allah, to the Quran, you're going to be even more amazed. Like when I looked at AI, one of the first things that came to my mind was when I, when, 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 when I, in my mind, just followed the outcome of how great AI is going to be. The first thing that came to my mind was, but it's still not going to be in the Quran. Allah said, وَإِن كُنْتُمْ فِي رَيْبٍ مِمَّا نَزَّلْنَا عَلَىٰ عَبْدِنَا فَأْتُوا بِسُورَةٍ مِمِثْلِهِ Allah said, if you are in doubt that this Quran is from Allah, bring one chapter like it. Call upon all of the humans, all of the jinn. You know what's so amazing about AI? That AI is literally the collective capacity or ability in many ways of mankind. Like ChatGPT reads the best of that which is on the internet and then it gives you a response and it's only getting better and better and better. ChatGPT will never be able to produce something the likes of Surah al kawthar Let it learn. Give it 10, 20, hundreds of years. Hundreds of years. And it literally is going to be bringing about the very best of human knowledge. Right? And it won't be able to produce anything like the Quran. In fact, there's a video of a brother. I never actually watched it myself, but some brothers, they watched it. Where he's going through ChatGPT trying to see if it can what? It can produce something linguistically like the Quran even because it responds in Arabic too 
And it, the conclusion was it said, I can't do this. Mm. I can't do this. Does that make sense? So I would say don't become amazed by, you know, are you going to pick something lesser to become obsessive and amazed over it than that which is better? And this makes me want to just learn the Quran even more. It just makes me want to dive even deeper into the speech of Allah. Alhamdulillah, um, that was an amazing episode. And, you know, for you guys watching at home, as I said, Chai with my bai is back with a bang. And we've got a lot more episodes just like this, if not better, coming on various topics. Our journey through hijrah, our journey through MMA, our journey with sleep, we're going to be bringing on very high value guests talking about topics to do with manhood, women, so on and so forth. So guys, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Let your friends and family know that Chai Mabai is back in town. If you benefit from that video, make sure you hit the like button, drop a comment down below. And as I said, share this video. And if you're interested in some of the topics that we've discussed and some of the courses that we mentioned, you can click the link <coughs> in the description to visit the Brothers Club where you can find out how we can help you improve your life, whatever it may be, inshallah. So with that said, we'll see you on the next episode of Chai with my Bai. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik. Ashhadu an la ilaha illa ant. Astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk. Assalamu alaikum. Alhamdulillah, we really hope you guys benefited from that discussion. For all of you who made it to the end, we have another gift for you. Again, no strings attached, absolutely free. We put together a uh, session where we went through in a lot of detail what a Muslim's relationship with wealth should be. We found that a lot of our brothers feel guilty about making money. They feel like poverty is a mindset that is something that is encouraged and praiseworthy. They feel like Zuhud means that you should, you know, not start up your own businesses. So what we did is we did a study of the Prophet and his wealth and a study of the Sahaba and their wealth. And we went through many examples and the balance between having money but still not falling in love with the dunya and chasing after the akhirah. And this is something that we, that we titled a Muslim's relationship with wealth. So we'd love for you guys to access it. All you have to do to claim this gift is go to the link below, put your email address in, and it's yours. May Allah bless you. Assalamu alaikum.